And my first stop is to talk to Joe Dada. He's the CEO of a company called Insteon. They make smart components for home automation. This is their engineering lab, AKA smart apartment. Open. Hey Joe, how's it hey, going? Hey Grant, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Thanks for having me here in the Th home of the future. Thanks for visiting Domo Soma. Okay, so what do you got? Well, I'd love to show you how Insteon works and how simple people can get started. This is an example of a handheld remote control. Okay. And this is an example of a plug-in module that makes a uh, dimmable device smart. So this is step one in the process. It, it, it's, you can get started this easily. Most people today get started with uh, smartphones and, and get their, oh, okay. their, their tablets involved right away. But this is, uh, for the technical community, this is uh, some under the hood stuff. Okay, got So it. Uh, the way we uh, control our network is peer to peer. And so even without a central controller, I can press and hold a set button to uh, pair devices, just like Bluetooth. Yeah. And so I'm set, pressing a set button on that device. And after I do that, I now have control of that device from this one. No central controller, no routers, no networking. Right, right. just it's this to really, that. Really, really simple. Cool. Now, one of the, the issues in the home automation space today is scaling because uh, homes uh, fill up with hundreds of devices. Gartner yeah. thinks that it's gonna be over 500 devices. And so the ability to control a whole bunch of devices is important. And to get that done, the way we've handled it is we put all the smarts in the responders. So I'm gonna repair this controller with that responder at a dim level. Sure. You know, maybe this is 30% or something. And after that pairs, now when I send a scene activate from here, it's gonna, oh. it's gonna return to that 30% level instead of full on. And now we could do the same thing with other lights, with appliances, with shades, with thermostats. It, uh, garage door openers, you, just anything that yeah. you can imagine. And because all of the knowledge is just distributed in the endpoints, it just scales naturally. So this little device can control over 400 um, paired devices and a central controller is endless. So, all right, so let's w walk me through here. How can we set up something that controls multiple things right, at once? Right, right. So the power of Insteon is just that. And so we've got a scene here that um, I just set up called Kitchen Lights. And if I tap a button, multiple lighting circuits go on and off instantly. Right, and, and they don't all have to be on the same circuit. That's right. It could be anywhere. They, they, they can be anywhere. We've got uh, customers with multiple properties, uh, acres and acres of land. And so because our signals go over power line, they get very, very far. Because they go over RF as well, it's very reliable. Because the problems right. that exist in the power line world rarely exist at the same time and place as in the RF world. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Because, you know, back in the day, um, you know, it was like, you go like this, and that's an audio signal turns on and off. And then there was one that traveled over the power line. Yep. But your system has... Power line and RF. All right. So it's, it's kind of like a, a redundancy built in. Yeah. It's a, uh, we call it a dual mesh. So uh, mesh networks repeat a signal. So unlike uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth where the signal, you've got to get the signal from your controller to your responder directly from here to here without help. In a, a mesh network, you have helpers. So if I walk over here out of range and I press on, that switch will hear it and repeat it. Okay. So there's not one central unit that plugs in that has to be the one that distributes That's right. everything in the network. If it hears a signal, it'll just That's right. pass it on. Yeah, so we do make central controllers, and you can have them, but they're not required. Right. And if they go down, if they lock up, your, the rest of your network's still functional. Okay, cool. So it's kind of fun. All right, so I want to I set up a scene here where multiple things turn on and off. Okay. And my mom who is not technologically advanced, uh, needs something to be simple. Yep. Let's see if we can, can you show me sure. setting it up? How quickly can we set one? Well, we could uh, create a scene right here. We'll just tap create a scene. We're gonna call this scene demo. Okay. And what should we put in here? How about if we put in, uh, uh, how about if we put in the, these lights and these lights? Okay. So the kitchen lights. So and you just the kitchen, check the ones that you want. Kitchen sink lights. Oh, I see. And it goes. And it defaults to on. We could adjust the on level. We could adjust the ramp rates. But okay. mom doesn't want all that complexity. Right. And so what's happening right now is instead of me pressing and holding set buttons, right, the software's 
uh, kind of oh, I can hear vir it. virtually. It's, it's talking. That's yeah. right. Okay. And, and they're all pairing. And at the end of it, would you like to turn off the scene? And that was, <laughs> that was it. So it's that simple. Oh, that's awesome. All and right. If we, and if we found demo on this list, which I think is alphabetically, let me turn it back on. Cool. And you'll notice they both go on instantly, same time, right? There's no, we call it popcorn in the industry when you see one thing go on, then another, and then another. Yeah. It really matters as you start building out a house. It's much more elegant when everything happens at the same time. All right, so what other types of so sensors. Um, so we've been talking about control, yeah. but we also do sensors like door sensors and motion sensors. Yeah, sure. The one that we get the most thank you letters on is our leak sensor. And so this is the easiest product you could possibly imagine <laughs> to install. And because so many homes suffer from leaks, people end up saving a lot of money and hassle. And all yeah. you, you literally, all you do is press this set button to, to add it to the network and Put it where you might have a leak, a water heater, an ice maker, a yeah, dishwasher. So wait, your, your washing machine overflows. Yep. This will detect it, and then what, what can it do? You'll get, uh, you'll get uh, instant messages and emails. And yesterday, uh, our, our sink in our kitchen at my house, uh, it literally happened. And so my wife and I are getting emails. And, I don't know the, kid, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the kids. The, the kids hit a pipe. And, yeah. you know. Joe, it's the house. Help me. <laughs> that's right. Help me, Joe. <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really handy, and and um, we now support the Apple Watch, and and so I think that the the wrist is going to become a, uh, an important part of this because when when your house has something to say to you, if your phone's in your pocket, you might not catch it right away. Right, but you'll so, see it. You'll if see it's on it. Your wrist. So handy. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, what else do you have to show me? All right, so, so Grant, this micro module can take any dumb switch or outlet and make it smart. Okay, so is that what this is? That's what we're doing here. We've found uh, this really high-end, uh, high-grade mechanical switch. It actually comes from France, <laughs> and it's literally just a mechanical switch. But behind it, you wire this guy in. This wires to the switch. Uh, your, your line and load wires to the house go into little screws here. Yeah. You put it back together, and you get that really high-end, my house is a cool house um, look and feel, but you still have automation. And so you can see lights turning off and on, right. and that can all be programmed, and, and you could program scenes off of it as well. I suppose I could see where somebody would be like, well, you know, everybody else has regular decor switches or whatever. I want something that is so different, so unique. And yeah, there is sort of a, an old world feel to, to this particular switch. Yeah, I well, can see that. And, and um, making your house smart shouldn't make it uncomfortable, and yeah. it shouldn't make it something you're not proud of. So products in this category, I think, help with that. Yeah, so it gives them options. That's right. Cool. What I'd like to do next is show you uh, some of the living room scenes that we have set up here. All right, Grant, so what's happened is you get hooked on Instion and you gotta do more of it. So you put in a keypad where you can control eight different scenes. Okay. But sometimes mom and grandma isn't so comfortable with that. So what we came up with here is a way to take our wireless switch <laughs> and yeah. cheat a little. You are cheating. Yeah, because there's no double gang electrical box here, just a single oh, box. That's but perfect. But the rest of the family understands how to use that. And this is, yeah, this is exactly the form factor that, you know, people would be comfortable with. Right. Cool. And so, this and so mom knows, knows uh, how to come in and turn the lights on and off, and it's totally uh, handy for them. And at the same time, you and I can come over here and say, well, I want some mood lighting. So um, we partner and can control Philips Hue bulbs over okay. there, and we can go to a nice purple scene. So this is, this is a product made by a different company that you interface with. That's right, yeah. We, sh we have about 20 different brands that we work with here, including Somfy Shades, First Alert Smoke Sensors, yeah. Venstar Thermostats, um, and, and Sonos for music. So when you're ready for a little music, you can hit a button and now it's music time. Nice. And one of our uh, crowd favorites is TV time. So we're all tired of having eight remotes with thousands of buttons. Yes. So in this case, one anybody, button. One button. Okay, let's, let's go check it out. And I don't know if you noticed, but um, one of the things that happened is the lights all dimmed down. Yeah, very like a, like a soft dim. Which is nice. um, and it turned on the television, it turned on the uh, receiver, it turned off the Sonos, and now we're enjoying TV. That's awesome. And then we got another remote here. So what if when I'm done with TV and I just want to go outside? Well, now you just hit end of TV. Okay. That'll turn off the television, turn off the amplifier, open the shades, and away we can go. Cool.
All right, well, looks like a beautiful day here in San Francisco. Yeah, let's go check it out. All right, Joe, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the technology that Insteon has. Dual mesh. I mean, what was the design process behind that? So we had a lot of background on the power line, and a lot of the products in our space uh, were communicating on the power line, and it worked really, really well. And that was the dominating technology at From, the beginning? Yeah, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Okay. Um, but a lot of products are battery powered. They have to be RF. Mm -hmm. So we had to have RF as well. And so we said, well, geez, if we used them both all the time, wouldn't that be better? And so yeah. mesh is better than star. OK, and so by having a mesh system, you have multiple device, like every device in your system, if they can hear a signal, they become repeaters. Yeah, that's right. And so most mesh networks uh, set up routing tables. And if uh, device A wants to talk to device Z, uh, a central controller figures out A talks to D, talks to K, talks to M, talks to Z. In our system, A talks to everybody A can talk to, and they all talk to everybody else. And you can kind of imagine how that signal becomes almost impossible to stop. And so it gets very, very loud, and it just works. That's amazing. All right, let's talk about the components. Uh, Mauser is an electronics distributor. Could I buy the components I needed for, for an Insteon controller? Yeah, you sure can. Um, our products are designed with off-the-shelf components. Um, other than the Insteon radio, which you would have to license the technology, and the plastics, yeah. which you'd make yourself, you can buy everything at Mauser. Cool. Let's talk about the price point of Insteon. I mean, where does it fall in the spectrum? Of so uh, our products start in uh, twenty nine dollars. <laughs> That's which is awesome. Yeah, it's it's very uh, approachable. We're we're at Walmart and Target and Home Depot, so yeah. um, you don't have to be rich and famous to, to own Insteon. Our average product is forty dollars, and it's all totally scalable. Yeah. So you can buy a starter kit, and then from there customize it to what you need. You can start with two pieces and end up with thousands. We have customers with thousands of devices. <laughs> oh, God. So you have this technology today, and it's really cool. And you've got, you're capable of interfacing to RF, infrared, thermostats, smoke alarms, light switches, all these things in the home. That's today. What's next? Well, um, the most important thing for our industry is bringing it together. So making sure the customer at retail knows that if I buy, buy brand X, it's going to work with brand Y. Okay. And so Apple's got HomeKit, Microsoft's working with AllJoin, uh, Google has their works with Nest programs, and we work with all of them. And so we want our customers, and I, and I think this is uh, true for all the manufacturers, we want our customers to know that they, they're going to bring this home and it'll work not only with our own branded products, but with each other. So you actually have, you've got in-house engineering that is working with all these development kits, with all these different products to make sure that Insteon, next generation Insteon, plugs right in. That's right. It, uh, for the customer, um, right now there's so much confusion in the market. The IoT is this really hot space and there's a lot of confusion about what it is, uh, what, how these products work together, a lot of jargon in the technology, right? So us engineers, we kind of understand it, but to a consumer, you know, what is RF and Zigbee and Z-Wave and Insteon <laughs> and all this stuff? Yeah. Well, these, these platforms, I think, will help uh, hide some of that and, and, and bring it to the background, which as a consumer, I don't even want to know about it. I just want to know it'll work. Right, and that, I think, for, for if I'm going to buy something for myself, or for my mom, or for anybody else. I want to know that I plug it in, it's simple to use, and it works. Yep, that's right. OK, so Insteon works with a bunch of different brands of uh, music controllers and right. LED dimmable light bulbs and things like that. What about having your technology work with other things to control it. Yeah, so in December we published our own cloud-to-cloud uh, -cloud API, so these other manufacturers can now, with very simple programming gestures, uh, control our stuff from their Ethernet-based uh, devices. So not only uh, smartphones and potentially 
smart watches, but... You, just anything you can imagine. So companies that make smart remote controls yeah. can integrate with our smart ro remote controls. <laughs> and, and it gets fun and exciting when you start thinking about the, the, what you can do as you start putting one and one together. Yeah. When you get a bunch of engineers together who have some cool piece of tech, suddenly that opens the creative floodgates. It's exactly right. So, I'm a fan of Iron Man, obviously. I, I, I want to be Tony Stark. <laughs> Let me ask you, because this is the realm that you work in, home automation, what about a Jarvis-type system where you have voice control and everything is, is integrated that it, way? It, it's coming. We were the first to uh, use Cortana for Microsoft. Oh, yeah. And, and now we work with uh, Siri and Apple. Um, it's coming, uh, but word to the wise, uh, automation and voice control need, uh, need some work to make them work every time in a, in, a, in a way that you want them to work. Yeah, I think voice control certainly for something like that, particularly in your home, you want to make sure that it's pretty rock solid. Oh, thanks a lot, thanks Joe. So much,